California politicians have declared war on rural communities in their state. Coming up, we'll tell you what they're trying to do to force people to leave rural communities and move to dense urban areas and what we're doing to fight back. I'm Carl DeMaio, Chairman of Reform California. And before you say there must be some conspiracy theory here, let's just show you the evidence and the receipts and a pattern that we're seeing in California of liberal politicians wanting to basically choke off rural communities and force people to have to move into dense urban areas. There's a pattern of policies that all are geared towards penalizing people who live in rural areas as though somehow you shouldn't be living out there. And instead, people should be in these dense uh, urban areas. And it's quite remarkable when you take a look at all of the policies and how they all seem to have penalties for communities that are rural and incentives for communities that are dense uh, urban. Uh, First, let me just start out with what they're trying to do with uh, uh, cutting off insurance in rural areas. We've seen insurance carriers, private insurance carriers, State Farm and Allstate, announce recently that they're leaving the state. They're making private decisions that it's no longer possible for them to financially make ends meet in the state by providing property insurance. And so they are deciding no new applications and they're going to be exiting the market. Now, state politicians should have uh, reacted to this decision by saying, oh no, what can we do? Is there any way for us to fix the situation? But they didn't. And the reason why is that government has its own insurance program called the FAIR plan. And under the FAIR plan, you pay a premium into the government insurance pool, and then they decide what properties would be covered, they decide what your premium amount would be, and they decide what replacement value would be for any sort of damage. Uh, This is a very dangerous situation to have a government-run insurance program, but it, it actually raises a bigger risk. What if government simply decides Uh, we no longer are going to insure in the following rural areas. That is absolutely the risk that you have when government gets to make the policies. And we see that the cost of insurance in rural areas is astronomically higher than other areas of the state. Now, you'll get told by the media and the politicians that the reason why insurance is so much higher in rural areas is that there's more damage to property. Well, that's actually not true. We have not seen higher amounts of losses and damage from rural areas. It is true that there is a higher risk for uh, potential flooding or uh, wildland fire damage. But in terms of the actual damage in those areas, we're not seeing a higher profile, a higher set of losses. We also know that it's the government that has failed to do what's necessary to fight back against some of those issues. The the flooding projects, uh, the flooding challenges can be uh, uh, lessened if government would simply improve our water infrastructure, raising reservoir levels, as well as lining canals and doing other sorts of investments, but they chose not to do that. We also know that they've been neglecting common sense wildland fire management practices to thin the forests The environmental groups don't want to see any sort of uh, uh, thinning of forests. And so the risk profile is greater. The approach has been to use the threat of natural disasters to try to claim that it's dangerous to even build or continue to live in rural communities when we're not seeing that data or evidence. We also know that government has cut off infrastructure from rural areas. I mentioned water. The water policy in the state of California has penalized rural communities by saying, we're just simply not going to give you any more water deliveries, or we're going to dramatically cut back on your water supply. When in fact, the water shortage is a man-made shortage through water law and water policy. Half of our water 
55% actually of our water each year is mandated to flow out to the ocean and get wasted. Only 5% of our water goes for human consumption and the remainder, about 40%, goes for agriculture. That water supply has been cut off from the agricultural areas and rural areas by state politicians, choking again the rural community. We've also seen other forms of infrastructure not put into rural communities, most importantly roads. As more people move into suburban areas and rural areas, we need more road capacity to get out there because people are commuting to and from centers of, of uh, jobs. But the politicians have said, we don't want to put money into roads. Instead, we're going to put money into dense urban transit systems. More on that in just a moment in terms of where they're telling people to build houses. But in San Diego County, for example, Highway 67 is a rural highway that goes all the way from East County in the South, all the way up to North County. And that two lane highway has been promised to, to receive an expansion to a four lane highway for the past 60 years. The population in Ramona, for example, Ramona, uh, California, which is in uh, the Northern um, Eastern portion of San Diego County, it has tripled since 1988. But in 1988, Ramona was promised four lanes in exchange for them enacting and supporting a tax increase. In 2004, Ramona was once again planned, uh, promised uh, four lanes for in exchange for a tax increase. You see the pattern here? Fast forward to 2023, the regional transportation agency, Sandag, announces they're gonna cut the four lane projects and that no investment will be made. Now, what those planners, the government planners say is that people shouldn't be moving to Ramona anyway. They should just decide to sell and move closer to their urban areas. So by choking off water, by choking off road infrastructure, what the politicians are doing is saying, you're not supposed to live there. We're putting infrastructure dollars in the dense core urban areas. Third, they're now mandating that you not build in the rural areas. They're making it very restrictive to build housing in rural areas while they're suing cities and jurisdictions for not building enough housing in the urban areas. Now you've heard politicians in California uh, do their press conferences saying, we need more housing, we need more housing, we're falling behind on housing. It's true, we've fallen behind on housing and we have a separate uh, podcast on the reasons why government is to fail, is to, uh, to blame for the failure uh, of uh, the market building housing. But while they say we need more housing, they're literally banning and choking off the housing if it's in their the wrong area in their estimation. The wrong area is don't build in the urban areas. And so take a look at this story here. This is a story about Rob Bonta, the attorney general in the state of California, suing Huntington Beach, California. Uh, and the governor, Governor Gavin Newsom, criticizing Huntington Beach, saying that we're going to sue you because Huntington Beach, which is in an urban area, refuses to play ball, refuses to meet these arbitrary state mandates for housing construction, for dense urban housing projects. So they say, we're gonna sue you because you're not building enough housing. We can debate whether that's appropriate, but that's what these politicians are doing. They're saying not enough housing means we'll sue your community. But now take a look at this story from the San Diego Union Tribune. Quote, Attorney General Bonta warned San Diego about building in areas with high fire risk. Now, he's going to say high fire risk because he needs to have an excuse as to why he doesn't want the housing. What he's really saying is don't build in rural areas. And he even supports litigation that would stop housing projects in those very areas. Even though you can build in a rural community and create vegetative buffers and do a variety of things to provide it uh, safety from uh, catastrophic wildland fire. Now, no, there is something else going on here. 
and that is there is actually a philosophy that we're up against on the far left. Their view is that if you live in the dense urban areas, that that's good for society. What it means is that people don't need highways. They don't need cars. They can walk, bike, and take transit because they all live in the same area. They also think that it's wasteful to have large properties, large houses, that you really should be living in the tiny house or an apartment building. Their concept is that government gets to plan communities, that it's all coordinated, that it's all efficient. In fact, the Regional Transportation Agency chief in San Diego, his name is Hassan Akrata. <laughs> he actually was trained in the Soviet Union, no joke. He was trained in the Soviet Union. He grew up in the Soviet Union. He worked for the Moscow uh, 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 transportation and, and uh, planning agency, came to the United States. He's now the head of SANDAG, which does a lot of this evaluation of regional housing, regional transportation. He expresses this far left-wing philosophy. Uh, he was on an interview recently, and he said, uh, well, he said this, listen in. In a great nation like ours, you can't let people do what they want. It has to be coordinated. You can't trust the people. It has to be coordinated. How offensive, how arrogant, but it very much reflects the philosophy of the left that you shouldn't be allowed private property rights. You shouldn't be able to build a home or a community where you would like. That government should restrict and only allow you to be building in the urban dense areas. Another benefit to the leftists for uh, trying to stop suburban and, and uh, rural uh, development. And that is they believe that if you're in the urban core, that it actually makes you think more like a liberal. And you've seen these dense housing projects placed in different communities. And we've seen those communities then shift their voting patterns as a result. Government subsidized projects, affordable housing projects, welfare uh, projects, all seem to shift voting patterns. Uh, we know that when California votes, uh, and we actually have a little map here of uh, uh, voting in counties, look at all the red in California. Now, no, overall, California is a very deep blue state because all those dense urban areas that are blue have a lot more people in them. But you go out to the rural areas, yep, red, conservative. And so don't for a moment think that there's not some political motivation behind punishing rural communities, limiting growth in rural areas, and trying to force people uh, by hook or crook to move into dense urban areas. It's a common thread through all these policies, housing, water, energy, transportation, insurance, some would say there's a war against rural communities. And if you look to California, you'll see the evidence of that war. Help us fight back by sharing this video, liking it so that the algorithm promotes it to more folks so we can get through the uh, censorship of the liberal media. And go to reformcalifornia.org. That's reformcalifornia.org. Contribute, sign up, help us spread the word and fight back in this state so that we can strike a blow for freedom, the freedom to live where and as you please. Thanks for watching. Help us break through the censorship of the liberal media by liking this video, sharing it with your friends, and subscribe to my YouTube channel.